Hey babes, welcome back to the Kinky Clinic. I, of course, in your always confident and professional doctor, Dr. Page. <sighs> Happy Day of Visibility, Transgender Day of Visibility, that is, to all of my trans subscribers and viewers out there. Uh, we just celebrated that last Saturday, so I thought it'd be good to uh, do an episode on Trans 101. What does it mean to be transgender? What's the general process? And so on and so forth. This episode is pretty much going to be an intro to a much larger topic, very similar to our consent episode a couple weeks ago. Um, and so, if you get upset that I don't cover a lot of specific things in this episode, try not to be mad. Um, we're going to cover more moving forward in the future, but this is just a basic intro. Um, so here we go. What does gender dysphoria slash being transgender mean? Well, this refers to individuals who are not the gender they were assigned at birth. So, for the most part, most of us are assigned either male or female at birth based on our outward genitalia and what society still perceives each set of genitalia to mean. Of course, you know, there's some people, there's a small percentage that um, is assigned intersex at birth and starting to see newer parents, especially within like the millennial generation, start to raise their children outside of um, like choosing, like assigning them a gender at birth and just raising them as non-gender until the child selects their own gender, which I think is awesome. Because the thing is, it's like our genitalia does not define gender. Science and many medical studies have proven that. We're not split into XX and XY chromosomes. Those are not the only two chromosome sets. I mean, there's quite a few chromosome sets. You can have you can have people who appear masculine be XX. You can have people who appear feminine be XY. You can have people outside of all that. Yeah. Chromosomes do not define gender and all that at this point. Um, that has been debunked. So, being trans means you do, you are not, you do not identify and you are not um, the gender you were assigned at birth. Just to clarify that, that statement, um, I consider identifying with something and being something as one and the same. Um, if you identify as a gender, you are that gender. It's not about trying to get there and all that. Because the thing is, it's like some people will say, oh, well, you can identify as something, but you have to actually go through the process to actually be that. No, 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 no. That's elitist. It's, it's all hell. I think you begin your life as you realize it, you know, it's there. Um, that's why we use the term cisgender to refer to non-transgender folks, as opposed to like comments like real woman or biological man or something like that, because trans women are real women, trans men are biological men, um, binary people are legitimate in their gender. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about non-binary momentarily here, but yeah, so that is gender dysphoria. When you're basically assigned the wrong gender and basically forced to live that gender, that's the worst kind of person you can think of. It's hell. So being transgender means you you know you you're dealing with that, 
And then, of course, at some point you start some sort of transition if you're able. Obviously, there's a lot of people who, around the world, who are unable to medically transition because of money or culture or laws. You know, it's, it's very brutal. There's a lot of shit that we deal with. Yeah, I'm trans myself. I'm a trans woman myself, and uh, I began transition 10 years ago. So yeah, um, it's a lot of hell to go through. Um, some countries, trans people are put to death for being trans. Here in America, any laws we have protecting trans people have been stripped away from the federal level. Even in so-called progressive cities and states, there's still trans discrimination in terms of housing, public accommodation, workplace, etc. It's brutal, but we do bear that hell as being ourselves is worth it. Freeing ourselves and living our authentic lives is the most liberating thing of all. That's why we do it. That's why we fight so hard. All right, so trans identities. You've, of course, heard of like male to female, AKA trans woman, female to male, AKA trans man. We also need to talk about non-binary people. And this is not just for cisgender people, but binary trans folks as well, who often overlook non-binary communities. These are individuals who don't identify as male or female. There's a lot of different identities within the non-binary spectrum, you know, such as androgynous, um, gender fluid, gender queer, agender, bigender, multi-gender, non-gender, like there's quite a few. And, this is a very important aspect of the trans community that is woefully underrepresented in trans politics, trans healthcare, and so on and so forth, which is very problematic. And this is something the trans community itself needs to work on. You know, the, the binary communities need to need to support non-binary folks. Yeah, so that's pretty much essentially a very rushed and basic overview of um, what being transgender means. Um, again, this is, I can't cover everything in one episode. I'm gonna have to do many episodes on this topic. Um, and I actually invite all of you to comment below or email me at tsvalerypage at gmail.com and let me know like what trans topic trans related topics you'd like me to cover as well as like you know just general top you know general sex topics in general you know it's late at night forgive me i am professional <laughs> But yeah, you know, anything regarding uh, like identity, sexuality, and all that, that's what this show is all about, is all of that and many other things. So um, the most important thing to take away from this episode, um, I imagine my trans audience, this is pretty much not the most informative episode. I mean, I'm already saying what you already know, but for my cisgender audiences who are unaware or misinformed or whatnot, this is what you should take away from this, is that being trans is not a choice. It is not a sin, it's not a fetish, it's not a mental illness, it is biology. Science has proven it starts in the brain, because we all, we're all like embryos and all that, we're all female, and then like our bodies develop based on hormones and whatnot. Well, there's plenty of times when that doesn't go, that goes a different way. That doesn't go what we consider traditional. It goes a different way. 
to where you have somebody given a set of genitalia that does not match with their brain. So, or maybe it does. I mean, I know a lot of trans women who are happy to have their genitalia and trans men who are happy to have theirs. I mean, being post-op does not make you a better trans person than a pre-op trans person. But, yeah. Um, my hope is that we start realizing that genitals are not congruent with gender, with, with gender and gender identity and all that. That it's literally, they're literally just the body part. And then we can start raising children well, gender neutral until they themselves understand what gender they truly are. So, because that, yeah. Forcing gender on people and forcing them into their roles is not good. You know, it's very harmful. It does create a prison within. And it leads to a life of hardship because, let's face it, we're in a society that hates trans people all around the world. Some countries are better than others, but it's still really bad. Um, we are moving forward, but it's small, tiny baby steps at a time. And there are certain forces that want to shove us way back. just gotta keep fighting. So for my trans audience, um, again comment on what other topics you want me to discuss on this. Also is there anything in this intro you think I should have brought up? By all means call my ass out. Um, other than that, you know, know that I'm with you, my heart beats with you, we're in this together. We got this shit. For my cisgender audience, uh, thank you for watching this far and I uh, hope you've come in with an open mind and maybe learned something. And what you can do to help us out is just, you know, stop, you know, stand up to trans bullying if you hear it. And just advocate for trans rights. And, you know, if you meet a trans person, treat them with respect as you would anyone else. So, yeah. Again, comment below. Email me at tsvaleriepage at gmail.com. If anybody's got some comments on this topic or questions, um, ideas for future episodes. Yeah, until then. Um, I'll be here next week, of course. Um, but until then, you know, uh, go forth. Be safe and be sexy.